Hi, I'm Steve Duval from Thor Motor Coach, and in this episode of Getting to Know Your RV, we are getting to know the Delano and Tiburon Class C Mercedes Benz Sprinters. You're going to like what you get here. Starting under the hood, you're getting the Mercedes Benz V6 diesel engine. And this is where you're going to maintain your engine, okay? You have to do all the maintenance that is all laid out for you in your owner's manual, but you have your air box, you have access to all of your fluids, you can check your oil. And what's really interesting on this is when you need a jump start, there's a grounding post right over here because the batteries are inside under the seat. And then over here, you twist this knob and you connect your red cable up. So if you ever need to jump start it, remember that. Pour your fluids in. This is what it looks like under the hood. You also have your DEF tank here as well, your diesel exhaust fluid. You're going to need to keep an eye on that. There is a gauge on the dashboard for you, but that helps your diesel fuel burn cleaner. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that as well. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take a look at your Delana. We're going to talk about your campsite, and then we're going to Head on over to the Tiburon and we're gonna get you all hooked up with sewer and water and electric. You're gonna learn a lot, so stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start checking things out. Starting out back, you will find that you have a ladder back here, ladder capacity 250 pounds. And this ladder is for you to go up on your roof and do maintenance items. Maybe you wanna check uh, your AC, maybe you wanna get your SIM card installed in your wine guard connect. You have to do yearly maintenance. This is how you access this. Sometimes you'll see people, they'll be pulled up and they'll have a camping chair out there at the racetrack. Not what the roof is designed for, okay? We don't want you falling off, getting hurt. We don't want you to damage your roof. Use it as is intended as a roof. So make sure you are doing maintenance items on your roof. We'll show you that here at the end of the video when we go through owner's resources and manuals, but use the ladder for that. So let's talk about towing. You have a seven pin connector down here and everything you need to know about your hitch is here. This is a 5,000 pound class four receiver. You have a 500 pound tongue rate, two inch receiver there. So if you're going to tow or haul anything, this is where you're gonna hook up. But before you can do, there are some warning labels here. There are a number of stickers inside the coach that give you a lot of information that you do need to know. Now there is a detailed video on towing. We will link up for you in this video. You can go ahead and watch that and learn everything you know about cargo capacity. But real quick, I just wanna go over a couple of the basics here. If you want to figure out your towing capacity, you take your GCWR, which is your gross combined weight rating, and that is, that is the weight of everything. We're talking people, passengers, cargo, what you have hooked up to your hitch, and you subtract that from your gross vehicle weight, okay? The gross vehicle weight is the curb weight, plus your actual cargo, your water, your propane, and your passenger. So a couple of numbers you need to know there. The other number you need to know before you figure this out is on a little yellow sticker, looks just like this. That is called your occupant and cargo carrying capacity. And what you find here is how much cargo you can hold. And that also includes a tank of water, and it is figured out for you right there on that label how much water weight you have on board. So it's something to keep in mind. All these stickers play an important role. All these numbers play an important role. So make sure you're doing a little bit of homework here before you start towing. Gonna start in the back, work our way forward over here on the campsite. You do have, at least on this particular floor plan, you will find your tankless hot water heater. Not a whole lot you have to do out here. There's some information printed here and on the door. If this is not working, you have an on and off switch out here. You also have a fuse, so you can come on out here and check that. You can also check your fuse box. We'll go ahead and show you how to do that a little bit later on in the video. You have a nice storage bay compartment right here. Now these latch with a knob and a key. After you are done loading or unloading, make sure you lock these up, especially before you hit the road. You don't want this somehow coming open and you don't want to lose all of your items as you travel down the road. Right down below, a slam latch door. Nice rotocast material here. You do have your own light in the storage bays. You can use those from Rapid Camp Plus. Real nice and easy. And you have an exterior propane connection. So you have, say, one of those little tiny grills. You put it in here, you set it up on a table out there. You run your hose from this connection over to your grill. Now keep in mind that the propane connection here is regulated. So what that means is if you are not getting the gas flow in your grill, remove the regulator from the hose to your grill because again, this is regulated. Moving on down the line here, we have our Onan QG 3600L P. This is a propane generator. You can get a diesel option. This one happens to have the propane generator. Runs off your propane tank. 
There is a little maintenance here that you are going to have to do on this, and that is all laid out in the owner's manual. But really uh, just a great item to have here. That's where you check your oil. There is a circuit breaker out here. So in the event that this wouldn't start, come on out here and check your uh, 30 amp uh, circuit breaker. Go ahead if it's tripped, reset it. You can start your generator out here so you don't have to walk in to make sure. You do prime it first. You hold down it into the prime position. The light will go on. Then you can go ahead and start. This one won't start as it is hooked up to the propane tank. And this is a brand new unit. There is no propane in the tank. We'll show you where that is and uh, tell you a couple of things you're going to have to do there. Uh, there's an air filter here. And this is uh, a real nice gadget to have. Um, one of the things that uh, to keep in mind with your generator, a lot of times people will think, well, I only want to use it for certain uh, applications. But really, this is something you can keep on. We get a lot of questions. Can I run my generator when I'm driving down the road? You most certainly can. In fact, that's what I do. That way it is running the air conditioning unit and you know that your passengers are staying nice and cool. And while you're running your air conditioning unit, I'm gonna to use today as an example, and we'll talk a little bit about your uh, thermostat controls in here. So we got a temperature of right around 80 degrees today, so it's a little warm. You're gonna to wanna to fire up your AC. Well, you can set it at 70 and be very, very safe. But if it was 90 degrees, you're not gonna be able to cool down that 20 degrees, okay? So you're gonna cause your air conditioner to work really, really hard. You're probably gonna end up freezing your coils and that's gonna take a very long time to thaw out. So make sure you're setting your thermostat about 10 to 15 degrees max below the ambient temperature. The best time to set it is in the morning, okay? Close your blinds after the sun comes up Set it in the morning, set it at say 70 degrees when it's nice and cool out and within that 10 degree range, then throughout the day, the air conditioner will be able to keep up. So go ahead and run this when you're uh, driving down the road. When you use this and because of the length of this motorhome, you can use it as a daily drive. You don't necessarily need to have a tow vehicle behind you, but you can keep it running while you're at uh, in a little town exploring a new town or you're exploring a park. Some parks don't allow you to run that, so keep that in mind, but you can run the generator. That way your air conditioner is on, your refrigerator is running, uh, your batteries are charging. Um, it's just a great way to keep your house cool, to keep everything running. You, you paid for this, so make sure you are going ahead and using that. Uh, moving over to the side here, we do have access to your refrigerator. This just simply, you move these knobs to the 12 o'clock position, this will pop up, and then you'll be able to find uh, your refrigerator back there if you need any maintenance. This is for your furnace. This is your furnace exhaust. Really nothing you need to do here. This does vent very, very hot. So keep that in mind if you're running your furnace in the colder months and you have to come outside for something that that is gonna be hot. Right down below we have our tires and something to keep in mind on this is we do have an inner tire here as well. So you have an inner and an outer tire and we have a valve stem extender. This allows you quick and easy to check your tire pressure. And it's important that you maintain your tire pressure uh, using the two valves there. These tires are gonna have a lot more PSI than your car does. All that information is printed on labels. So follow that information, make sure your tires are inflated properly, especially if you're towing. You're gonna get better tread wear, you're gonna get better mileage, you're gonna have smoother towing, you can avoid a blowout, and you do wanna check those. I would check them before I hit the road. Don't check them after you get to the campsite, they're hot. That's not the time you wanna check your tires. You wanna check your tires when they are cool. So do that in the morning before you head out. Proper tire maintenance, very, very important. Moving on down here, two 110 volt outlets. These will be hot when you are plugged into shore power or if you are running your generator. We'll show you how to hook up to shore power in a few minutes, but these are great for maybe hooking up, uh, maybe you have an electric grill or an electric cooktop or a blender or a radio, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and connect those to these outlets. Another storage bay for you here, throw in the camping chairs. You got a little pass through up there, maybe some fishing poles. Again, you do have a light in there and you'll be able to turn that light on using Rapid Camp Plus. Nice big slam latch bay there. Moving on down, we do have our steps that lead right up into the cabin and we have a couple of great floor plans to show you here. First thing I wanna mention is you walk into the door because you're gonna walk in here to load stuff up. You're, you're very excited for your trip. You're going to find a battery disconnect switch. Go ahead and turn that on. On this one, you'll see a red light come on that will fire up the 12 volt system in your motorhome so you can turn on your lights. Um, it also is something you're gonna to wanna to keep on the entire time you are gone because we do have 
our chassis batteries, which are located under the step. The house batteries are tied into the chassis batteries. And what that means is when you have your battery disconnect switch on, when you're driving down the road, your chassis battery is charging your house battery. When you have your generator on, you're charging your batteries. When you're plugged into shore power, you're charging your batteries. So all very, very important. Make sure you keep that battery disconnect switch on. The only time you'll turn it off is when you are storing your motor home. And even then, you're gonna have some small electrical drains in there and you could potentially get your batteries drained down to nothing. So you can either A, disconnect those batteries, or if you have the ability to plug into just a regular household outlet, you can do that. I'll show you the adapter you need when we talk electrical. Also these steps, there's a switch in here for these stairs. So right now, the stairs go in, which is exactly how you want them when you are driving. But say you're at a campsite and you don't want the steps uh, coming in and out every time you enter, you can go ahead and hit the step button and then next time you shut your door, your stairs will stay out for you. Okay, but again, before you leave and hit the road, make sure you hit that button and your stairs go in, just like that. You also have an awning, an armless awning, which is really, really nice and is controlled through our Rapid Camp Plus system right here. All you have to do, and we'll go through this uh, in detail inside, you find your exterior awning, which is on your slide, you hit, the extend button, one time, one touch, that's all it takes. It'll automatically go out in a day like this. I will be glad to have some shade. There's also lights for the awning. You go to where your lights are with just the light bulb. You hit front awning and your lights come on, but it is shining bright. Not sure you can see those. If you can, it is an LED strip that runs right here. You can see whether or not your awning is in or out. Uh, this is a two-stage awning. It's got a nice pitch to it, so it's going to give you a lot of shade. Okay, so even when the awning's in, these lights make a great night light. So if you're at your campsite and you're going to the pool or you're going to the hot tub, you can keep these on at night, come back, and no problems getting in. They're not going to be intrusive or obnoxious to your neighbors. So just another great little feature here. We'll get back into that when we uh, show you your multiplex Rapid Camp Plus wiring system. Retracting your awning just as easy. Go ahead, hit the retract button once, and in it goes. Simple, easy, and a great feature. We're gonna go on down, we're gonna talk about your mirrors and move on down to all of your hookups, so come on. So over here on the driver's side, we have a couple other things to talk about, including our hookups. We'll start up here with your mirrors. You're going to be able to adjust those, or power mirrors adjust the bottom one to see right down the side. You're gonna climb in just like you would your car. This is a class C motor home. A lot of great tech in here we're gonna talk about when we move inside here where you're gonna find all of those stickers. I was talking about when towing, there's your diesel fuel. It goes in right here. The nice thing about that is you have to open your door. You can't, you can't access that unless you open your door. Behind this bay, we have our propane. And it's interesting to note that this propane is going to do a number of things for you. We showed you the propane fill, right? So you're going to be able to, you know, use an exterior grill. You can hook up these, I don't know if you've seen these, these great fire pits, portable fire pits you can use off of uh, propane. So that is a, a great option here. And it is also going to run your cooktop. You're going to have your furnace run off of this. And if you have the propane generator, this is going to run your propane generator. So you have a gauge here to let you know where the level is on and off valve, a bleeder valve. This is where you fill it. You can fill this anywhere you get to propane fill, be it a U-Haul, a, a hardware store. It is a new tank, so it is going to have to be purged first. There is some air in here. It's gonna take a little while, use a little more propane, but really easy to fill. Um, keep in mind when you're traveling through certain tunnels and bridges, that some do not allow your propane to be on, so you're gonna have to check ahead. There are signs too, so make sure that uh, you're following the rules of the road with your propane tank. Moving on down, we have a nice storage bay here. You can throw uh, whatever you need in here. Again, lock it when you're done in this bay. Nice and big, I threw a bunch of stuff in here because we're about to get to the wet bay and hook up some electric. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move everything out. We're gonna set it up over here. Show you this bay here. You have a 
drain a, a valve here so when you're draining your fresh water tank you simply turn the handle and you can drain your tank and you have a light here for your uh, storage bay which you can control from rapid cam plus so i'm going to move on back and we are going to hook up some electric some sewer and it is going to be a good time so what do you say we get some power going to the coach this is your 30 amp shore power cord okay you have a 30 amp outlet right here when you get to camp you're going to want to plug in so you have a couple of different connections here you can see they're all sized so there's only one way to put it in you line up the uh, plugs you put it in you twist the lock shut just tighten it up just a little bit there and you are good to go now you'll notice when you are plugged in when you connect to the receptacle at the campground this will light blue but before you go ahead and plug this end in right here you walk it over to the fuse box take into or the circuit breaker box turn off the circuit breakers at the campground then you're going to go ahead plug it in and you're going to turn the breakers back on at the campground now if there is an event where all they have left is a 50 amp site and you have 30 amp it's okay if you have the proper adapter you can get an adapter to plug this into a 50 amp receptacle now it's not going to blow out all the fuses in your coach it's designed for that we have the proper precautions in here uh, so you won't blow it the fuse you can do that and i also talked about plugging in to prevent your batteries from draining all you need is a, a, a adapter like this you plug that on now you're good to go and you just plug that simply right into wherever you are storing your motor home for the winter and your batteries will not, uh, your batteries won't drain. Gonna move down one, one bay, drag this over. We got a couple of things going on here. This is our wet bay, okay? So in here, I guess we'll talk about, uh, there's a little compartment here. If you wanna keep your sewage hose in there, you most certainly can. The way this one is with the connectors, the one I use for demos, it doesn't fit just because I have a lot of uh, adapters on here. Uh, you have an exterior shower, which will come in handy when we're draining the tanks. You have um, a great, let me move this outdoor shower out of the way here. Okay, so this right over here, you turn on, you have a water pump, you have a tank flush, you can hook up your satellite cable run right here. So if there's coax, if they have cable at the campground, you just screw in your coax here, you run it over to the campground. When we go inside, I'll show you how to work that. This is really kind of easy to follow along here, depending on what you want to do with your tanks here. So up top, if you want to flush your tank, you can. You hook your hose up, and I would prefer, well, it is probably best if you use something like this. This is your potable water. I know I should have untangled these, right? So there you go. This is an adapter if you need to go from uh, 50 to 30. So you take this. This is your drinking water hose. If you are hooking to your city water connection or you are filling your tank, you'll either hook it to here to fill your fresh water tank or you will connect it to here for your city water. Now, when you're connected to city water, you don't need to turn your water pump on because the pressure from the water will do that for you. But when you're connected over here, you'll need your water pump on. So this is your potable water drinking hose. If you are going to flush your tank or you're going to uh, use the Santee flush there, you're going to want to use a hose like this. Don't use the same one you use for your drinking water. Okay, so you're going to just screw that right up into here. And then you're going to open your black handle. And then when you turn the water on, that'll come through and that will flush your tank out for you. We'll show you how to hook up your sewer hose here in a second. But depending on what you want to do with this, real easy to follow diagrams right here. So if you want to sanitize your tank, you keep just like we are here. Okay, if you want to dry camp, you turn it like that. When you're filling your tank, you turn it just like that. Again, all the information on this is going to be found in your owner's manual. So uh, this is really an easy system to use. It's kind of nice that everything is right there. As we go on to hook up your sewer, let's do this. I'm trying to get the best angle for you. So we have our cap on. Okay, this is our gray handle. This is our black handle. Our black handle is all of the sewage. Okay, that's everything from your toilet. Over in your gray tank, that is going to be your sink going to be your shower water. You're going to need your sewer hose. This just connects on, twists, and locks. Then you're going to take and you're going to run this end right here. Just run this over to where the campground dump is. It may be a dump station, maybe at your campground, whatever they have available. You go ahead and you lock that into place. 
Then you're going to go ahead and you are going to pull your black handle. You're going to let your sewage tank drain first. That's going to drain out. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull your gray handle because the gray water is cleaner. You're going to want to put that through second to flush anything out here. When you are done flushing your tanks, go ahead, close up your black tank, close up your gray tank and unhook. But before you put your hose away, hold it up like this, okay? Because there still may be some water or residue in there. Hold it up over here. This is where you're going to grab your exterior shower. You're going to turn that on and you are going to go ahead and rinse that out just like that. And then you kind of lift it up so all the water in there kind of flows through and then drains into the campground when you're when you think you're good to go. And then you're it. You're done. That's it. You can go ahead. You can pack your uh, pack your gear up. You're going to put your cap back on and you are ready to go until the next time. Don't keep your tanks open all the time. You know, pick a time, drain them in the morning, drain, drain them at night. You can do whatever works best for you. So that is how you sanitize. You get water, your black tanks, that's everything you need to know out here. We have a lot more to show you inside, so let's go ahead and get set up with stabilizer jacks and put out our, put out our slides. All right, we are all hooked up. We are ready to set up camp. Now, depending on your floor plan, you may have electric stabilizer jacks. You may have one touch leveling jacks and there are a difference between the two. The stabilizing jacks simply stabilize the back of your motorhome. Two controls left and a right can put those down and then get a nice solid surface. Now, if you're a little cockeye, you can take and maybe put the one down a little more and straighten that up, but they're not leveling jacks. Those are electric stabilizers. The one touch leveling jacks are exactly that one touch. You go ahead and you turn your engine on, you hit auto and they will come right down for you, level you out nice and even. Now, you can put those down manually, which is a very nice feature. Um, so you can go left, right, up, down. You can go ahead and can set that up however you want. It is important though that one, that your tires remain on the ground after you put your jacks down. Two, some campgrounds do require jack pads, whether you're using stabilizers or the one touch leveling hydraulic jacks. So make sure that you know that the campground has carry some jack pads with you, which is also great if you're set up somewhere and the, the ground's a little soft, you're gonna wanna do that. So as we get ready to put out our slide room, you can see right here, slides and awnings, our driver slide, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit, hit extend. And away she goes. Now, because we are plugged in to power, you're gonna be okay on maintaining proper voltage throughout. In the event you are dry camping and you are not hooked up to shore power, what you're gonna to wanna to do is start your generator. Run your generator to make sure you have the right voltage, keep it high enough to put your slides out. So we're gonna put this out. This is gonna go all the way out. When it gets to the end, you wanna listen for the motors to sync up makes a very distinct noise. You wanna make sure that the motors are synced and ready to use the next time. Keep your finger on the button, okay? And hold this button down for a few seconds after the wall goes all the way out. This is a full wall slide. It really opens up the space in here. Just a wonderful living quarters in here. Here we go, you ready? All right, so did you hear that? Yep, they are out and ready to go. The motors are synced. Now in the event, the motors become out of sync, and that can happen. I mean, things can fall, your finger can slip off the button, you can say, oh wait, you're too close to the tree. If they do get really out of whack, there is a brain in the storage bay. You can go ahead and you can reset it there. One, two, three, four, five, six on the seventh. There's a little button inside. You press that down, it will flash green, and then it will take and reset your motors. In the event you need to manually put your motors in, you just unplug, you just unplug the two plugs and then uh, you're gonna need a few friends at the campsite to help you push the wall in, then you plug the motors back in. You can also reset those from here with six presses. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you hear that? Now those motors are synced back up and they are ready to go. So let's walk through our Rapid Camp Plus system because this is a really neat system that you can use via your phone. You can also use it via the screen or your tablet. So if you want to hook it up, you go to settings and you go to mobile app, download the Vega Touch Mirror app. You're going to do that first. You're going to download that straight to your phone, hook it up. There's an ID. You're going to look for that ID. You're going to type in that pin. You can reset your pin and then you're ready to rock and roll. So back home, light master on and off. You can turn your lights all on or off from here. You can set your uh, temperature right from here. You can see, remember we were talking about that difference. 
89.71. I probably uh, probably wouldn't go quite that low. Now that's up to 90. That's almost a 20 degree difference. So in this situation, I'd probably knock it down to about 80, maybe 78 or so, and then go and slowly cool it down. But if you follow the tips in the morning, it won't be a problem. Look at your tanks from here. Fresh, gray, black, propane. You can go ahead and look at your tank levels. You can turn your water pump on or off from here as well. Tank heaters, yep, this has tank heaters. A lot of people ask about Four Seasons coaches, and these, these tank heaters really aren't designed for sub-zero temperatures, okay? So if you're somewhere where it's 32 degrees or right around there, you're gonna be good to keep your tanks from freezing. However, if you wanna use it in much colder climates, you're gonna need to add uh, additional tank heaters and some insulation to keep everything warm there. You can monitor your house battery and your chassis battery. You can start your generator from here. You have an auto gen start, which you can also access right here from power. You can set the parameters. Do you want it to set through low volts? Do you want it to set to your HVAC load, which is essentially the thermostat that you have? So if you have pets in here, whatever you have your thermostat set at, when it reaches that level, this will kick on. You can set your quiet time. You can start set your volts, how many times you want it to retry. So a lot of great options here. Again, we have a complete breakdown of this system on our YouTube channel. Another menu for lights. On your lights, if you see the arrows, you can dim those. You just hold those down and the lights will dim. You can turn all your lights on or off right from here. Now we're back at climate. You can turn your cool. This has the uh, optional heat pump on the AC unit. You have a furnace or you can just set it to auto. You also have fans for your kitchen and bath if you need a little ventilation in here. And moving down to our slides right here, this is how we put out our slide. And then you have your awning, again, the one-touch awning. That's a great feature. And then we're back at our settings where you can uh, hook up to your mobile app. And uh, right here, it says bedroom switch strength. Okay, look at that. So you, this will let you know that there are remote panels with batteries in them, okay? So it's like little, you can actually take those off the wall and carry those around, but once you're hooked to your phone or tablet, you don't need to do that. You can go ahead and set your clock from here. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. And if you want to wipe the smudgy fingerprints off at cleaning mode, the screen goes black for 15 seconds. You wipe it clean and then it will come back on. Right below here, we're going to go ahead and get into our entertainment because we do have the new Bluetooth Coach radio system. This does it all. I mean, you have a CD player here. You have an alarm clock. You can dim the lights right from here. You can set a, a sleep timer, choose from radio, disc, and auxiliary. You got Bluetooth. So a lot of great options on here. The entire manual for this is going to be in your uh, We'll show you how to find your manual in the little black bag that comes with the, your motorhome, but read your manuals on all of these products. We're giving you the once over here, but you can go ahead and just stream your favorite playlist here. On the other side, there is a charging net, so you can actually hook it up, set your phone down, charge it up, set it, and forget it. And while I'm in the doorway here, we talked about uh, the power switch. Uh, right down below, you also have your electric stabilizers. That's how you're going to put those down. You have your solar controller. You also have solar on this. 100 watts of solar charging comes standard. Your solar controller is there. That is how you monitor the solar coming in. You also have an inverter on this motorhome. And if you don't know what an inverter does, take a look. The Delano and Tiburon are equipped with a 1,000 watt inverter. All you need to do is turn it on. It takes 12 volt DC power from the batteries and changes it over to AC power. Now you can turn on the television and it powers select outlets so you can use them without being plugged into shore power or using the generator. Take note, this does use power from the house battery so you need to make sure they stay charged. So much to talk about up here on this Sprinter Dash. Mercedes updated everything not too long ago and wow, it's a great setup. So many features and functions. It is looks like a lot, but it's not really overwhelming as there's a lot of voice activation and it's very intuitive. We'll start over here on your door panel where you have controls for your mirrors and your windows. You have a vent right over here. Over on this side, you have your door locks. You have heated seats. Yes, so even when you're spun around because these seats do swivel and become part of your living area. You have nice heated seats. They are power adjustable. You have three position memory, so three drivers can just set their settings and then set it so they get in, press whatever button they are assigned to, and the seat will adjust perfectly for them. Have controls for your windshield wipers, your uh, headlights, your directionals. This over here is how you shift into gear. Up for reverse, down for drive, and you press the little knob here to put it into park. It does have uh, keyless start. You just go ahead and touch the button, foot on the brake, and away you go. There's a little place down below where you can store your key. It's right down here. 
fits right in there. You can also keep it right in there if you want to, but make sure that the key is somewhere in proximity of the engine start button. Let's walk through the dash. You have some paddle shifters here if you feel like a little, little racer in you. Shift yourself. On this pad over here, see these little black pads? These are, these are thumb pads. Okay, so you can scroll through all kinds of menus with these, just swiping left or right. This button here takes you home, and let's look at what we have here. Okay, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. From here, yep, reset. You betcha we're going to reset. All right, so we scroll up. Now, we have our trip meter. We have drive assist, and this is, we have service reminders. Um, our drive assist, we go ahead and click on that. That will give us a number of safety features there, your attention level. Uh, so some great safety features on this one. Trip meters, navigation. You can, uh, it'll tell you what direction you're there, but right there is going to be your big screen. You hit back home, you have your radio. Do you want to listen to radio? Do you want to listen to Sirius XM satellite radio? It is equipped with that. Different media options like Bluetooth. You connect a Bluetooth device there. You can take Bluetooth phone calls and some settings that you can customize. Your cruise control is right here. And then over on this button, is over on this side of the steering wheel, sort of the same features, but it's how you control your radio. Use the thumb wheel here. Down here is the volume. You can control your volume while you're driving with the scroll wheel. Answer phone calls right from here uh, and go right back to the menu if you want to do it this way, kind of a hands-free device, which is really, really nice. It's also voice activated. You just say, hi, Mercedes, and then she will usually uh, pop in and help you out there. So voice activation on this. You hit the home button. And let's go through here. There's your phone calls, your navigation. Again, radio, if you want local channels, media, you have info. This is really kind of neat. It kind of keeps track of uh, your engine, your fuel consumption, your uh, just so many, your engine torque, your performance, your battery voltage. You can download a, a manual from there if you want, a number of Mercedes apps that you can uh, do when you connect your phone, which you will do right up in this bay you have a number of ports you can see the phones here these are all USB-C ports right up here also a number of storage bays and cup holders as we go back there are a number of settings right over here you can customize whether it's uh, assistance traffic sign assist active lane keeping active brake assist attention assist these are all safety features that are incorporated right here it recognizes signs it keeps you in your lane so if you start to drift you'll get a warning and you need to come over active braking assist it helps you brake if uh, you see some, if it's coming up too close on somebody. Attention assist, if you start to drift off, that's going to help you out there. Um, information on your, uh, on your vehicle, you can set to some information there. You can search for gas stations. You can turn on your lights, set the delay, your interior lighting, uh, and a number of different system controls here if you want to go ahead and tweak your audio. So there's all kinds of options you can set up here, and you can take and look at the entire manual to get the full rundown of this. Uh, you can also hit navigation and map if you want to do it that way. Telephone, radio, media, your volume's here. You also have uh, a couple of buttons over here for quick access. Again, these all double up what are here. They are just hard buttons instead of the soft buttons. Right down below, we do have our HVAC controls. They work just like they, you would in the house. Uh, right here, though, this is your door, uh, your door lock. You can lock your doors uh, using that. Up and down, fans, higher or cooler. We have it set very quiet right now. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, oh, I do want to talk about up here because we do have a skylight. You can extend or retract the skylight. You have sun visors. You do have map holders up there. You do have some lights. You also have an SOS button. And I will tell you, I've accidentally hit the SOS button when uh, we've been in here shooting videos and we get too close and my head has hit it. Uh, they're very, very friendly. They are very, very friendly and they want to make sure you're okay. But if you ever get in an emergency, you hit the SOS button and you are set. So now that we've talked about the dash and the power seats, they do indeed swivel. So we're going to swivel these around and we're going to look at all of our interior options. So in your overhead bunk, at least right now, and you can store those wherever you want, inside this container, this is really great, privacy shades. So at nighttime or in the daytime, if you want to keep that heat out, you just pull these out. Windshield, driver's door, passenger door, they have magnets on them. They pop right into place. It's very easy, very handy. You fold them right back up. You have a great place to store them. Right now, though, we are going to store them right back up here. This is your overhead bunk. 250-pound max. We have a ladder for it. You can sleep comfortably up here. You have your sky shade, which 
is controlled right, uh, right with the switch right down here above the dashboard if you want to sleep under the stars. So a great sleeping option for you here. You have privacy curtains that snap into place over on this side. And we also have the Dream Dinette. This is a great option uh, if you want to seat four people for a game or a meal, or maybe you want to lean back and put your feet up. You do have a footrest. You pop that up. You can lean back because they have a little backrest. And boy, you have a great place to sit. There's all kinds of storage in these Euro style cabinets up here. You have USB ports. You have speakers that will pump the music from your radio up through back here. You have a light control back here for LED lights. They are push button lights if you want to read over here and maybe a little darker over there. Whatever you want to do, you can even sleep here. Yes, indeed, the Dream Dinette with a little help of a handle down here. You just move your cushions. You push this down, you put your cushions right back over into place, and that creates a great surface for you. In the morning, you just pull it up, lock it back into place, slide your cushions back where they go, and you are set to make breakfast in the wonderful kitchen. Over here in the kitchen, more storage for you, a lot of great storage. We have storage down below, you have a waste basket. You have a stainless steel sink with a pull down sprayer. You have a cover for that sink if you need a little extra room. Your windows just crank open if you want a little fresh air. And they open this way, they pitch open this way. So even if it's raining, it's not gonna get wet inside. You have your two burner gas cooktop right here. This lights just like at home. Make sure your propane's on, turn it to light and you will be able to light your, uh, light your stove to go ahead and cook. You kind of lift up a little to pull down and right down here, your convection microwave. And this works just like your oven. All you need to do is hit convect and then set your temperature according to your recipe. If you wanna bake, a, a, throw a roast in there, throw a roast in there, a chicken, bake up some cookies. You can do it here. In fact, we have a show called Mobile Meals. You'll find it on our YouTube channel. Goes over using all the tools in your kitchen to create some great, great meals. So Mobile Meals, using your convection microwave, your uh, gas cooktop, a great kitchen setup here, and yes, no kitchen would be complete without a fridge. And what's unique about this fridge is you can just set the mode to auto. So when you are plugged in, or if you're running off of gas, you can set it to the auto mode and the refrigerator will know where to go. So right now we have gas on. The little snowflakes over here, the more snowflakes, the colder it is. You can go ahead and change your mode over here to auto. That means we're plugged into electric. Uh, or you can change it to just electric. But the best advice, just keep it to auto. It's very smart, it knows what it's doing. And uh, the one thing to keep in mind here is before you head out on your trip, if it's sat for a while or if this is brand new, it's gonna take about five, six hours for this thing to cool down. So if you can plug it in using one of those adapters that I showed you, you can go ahead and plug that in and get this thing nice and cold so you are ready to go. We're gonna flip things around here. We're gonna show you the closets, we're gonna show you the bedroom, and we're gonna show you the bathroom. This floor plan has some nice closet space for you. You also have cushions for your seat. So when you have the seats spun around, they also have little extenders if you want, but you also have these little booster seats if you need that. A number of drawers down here, and we have a couple of options here. In the daytime, if you wanna go ahead and use this as your couch, go right ahead. You have a TV back here can sit, put on shoes, you can get ready. There's a charging station here. You have 12 volts for if you need a CPAP machine at night, 110 USB. Then at night, real easy to make your bed. Little elastic strap here, you just move that. Now you have a bed made up. It is just that easy. Nice, comfortable bed. In the morning, you don't even have, you know, throw some stuff back there. Throw your, throw your jammies back there. And then you just go ahead and you strap this right into place. Uh, something else uh, to talk about right down here. This is your fuse box or your converter. It is the brains of your electronics, of your electrical system in the motorhome. And we always put these in places where you're gonna be able to, uh, to have access to them, whether the slides are in. A lot of times, most of the times they're in the bedroom, but depending on the floor plan, they will end up in a different location just so if you need to service it, you can. So what this is going to do, this converter, whether you're plugged into shore power, if you are on your inverter, uh, if you're running your generator, this is going to take all of that. As you can see, we have a 12 volt here and we also have uh, 
breakers here, just like your house. So it's going to send the power to the 12 volt. It's going to send power to the 110 volt items. Now, in the event something's not working, maybe it's an air conditioner, maybe it's a fridge, maybe it's your lights, maybe it's your GFCI outlets. And if an outlet is not working, go ahead and reset your GFCI. They work just like they do at home. More than likely, that's going to fix the problem. But you can always check in here to make sure, like over here, here's your GFCI. Oh, that's working. So if you reset it, you should be good. Now, one thing that's important to know about this setup here is never replace these fuses with something that's different. So for here, we have a 10 amp fuse. Don't replace it with a 15 or a 20. Same goes if you have a 15 amp or a 40 amp fuse. Take the 40 amp fuse out. You can't throw a 10 amp fuse in there. So make sure you are replacing that. But this is where you're gonna find that. It's all labeled, it's easy to use and easily accessible if you ever need to access your converter that's where it's at. We're gonna go ahead and open the door of the bathroom and show you what's in here. Here we are in your Sprinter bathroom and this layout here has your sink, you have a nice medicine cabinet, you can store what you need in there, you have a vent for a vent up top, you operate the fan here, you have a light switch, you have your GFCI outlet I was talking about, press that button to test to reset. Remember outside we showed you the tankless hot water heater. This is where you operate it here. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can adjust your temperature as high as 124, and then you can take it down to, if you want a cold shower, you can do that as well. But this is where you control that. A lot of storage down here. You have under the sink storage. You have your shower, your nozzle is on a wand, so you can move it around, you can rinse off, and with the skylight, you really have a lot of headroom up here. Do need to talk about our toilet, though, because this is something that is, it happens quite often, uh, and it's just because people aren't aware that you cannot use regular toilet paper in your motorhome. You need to use an RV or marine type of toilet paper that will break down easily in the tanks. Now, when you are using your toilet, there's a foot flush right down here. I have my heel on it right now. If you press it halfway down or so, you can hear the water coming in there. You wanna fill your bowl up with water first. Go ahead, do your business. Do what you gotta do when you're done. You'll press it all the way down and you will flush your toilet. Make sure, and hold that pedal down, okay? You got water in the tank, you got water coming in. Go ahead, hold it down. You can always drain your tank, but it is important that you are using that RV or that marine grade toilet paper. All right, so we finished up in here. We need to go check out the FB. We have a Murphy bed option to show you. So let's hit up that sprinter. So here we go, your Murphy bed. By day, it is a couch. You're, you're leaned up here. You have some charging ports over here, even a 12 volt if you need a CPAP machine when it is in Murphy bed mode. This is actually really comfortable. I could spend quite a bit of time here. Very, very nice. But eventually you're going to want to go to sleep. So you're going to take and you're going to move your pillows. You're going to move your cushions. And this goes really, really fast. And then you have your key. 12 is off. 3 o'clock is on. You press the down button. Bring it down. Oh, somewhere right around there. You're going to flip over the footrest. There's a little pull that. That'll lock right into place here. And then you go ahead and you finish putting your Murphy bed down. Just like that, it is that easy. It's a very comfortable bed. In the morning time, get it to about the same position. You're gonna pull the pin. You're gonna fold the legs back up. You're gonna flip this right back over. Gonna put this all the way back up. You can go ahead and turn the key off if you want. You put your cushions right back into place. You grab your cozy, cozy pillows, put those into place. You can sit down and you can watch TV and you can sit on a pillow or you can lean against it. You can sit down and watch TV and here's what's great is you have a couple of options with this entertainment system. So we're gonna flip around and show you what you have when it comes to TV. Your favorite Thor Motor Coach, such as this, is going to have a television and every TV is going to have this wine guard box. Now, if you would like to watch TV through the antenna and tune in local stations, maybe you want to catch the local forecast, what you need to do is press this button and make sure that the green light is on. See how the green light is on there? Now you can go through and scan the television and grab all your local channels. If you are connected to cable at the campground, press this button, the light is off. Now you can take your television and you can scan all those cable channels and working your TV is just as simple as that. 
As we wrap up, the last thing I want to cover with you is what you have in your black bag. All four motor coaches come with this black bag, and inside you're going to find all the owner's manuals for all the appliances inside. It is recommended you fill those out so you can send those in. That way you have the warranty on that product. You're also going to find your warranty guide in here. You're going to find your owner's manual. You're going to find your spare key. Everything you need is in here. So this is. Here is your owner's manual. Here is your warranty guide, okay? So you have a 12-year structural, six-year lamination, and one-year limited warranty. So make sure you're going through and you're following the proper procedures on, on your warranty guide. Go ahead, read your owner's manual. There's a lot of great information in here on using all of the features and appliances in your motorhome. We give you a quick tour, but really in-depth here. You're also gonna find some in-depth how-tos on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you check that out as well you like and subscribe, you can also go to our owner's resource page on ThorMotorCoach.com. Go to owner's resources and get yourself signed up. You take the VIN number of your vehicle. You type it in, you get registered. Now you're gonna have access and information to your specific vehicle. You're gonna get schematics, diagrams, whatever you need, quick start guides. It is right there. So go ahead to our owner's resource page. You can get signed up. It's simple, it's easy. And we hope you have a great time out there on the road in your Delano or Tiburon Sprinter from Thor Motor Coach.